Hello, my name is Daniel Smith, and today I'll be leading you through the Terminal and Virtual Software Solutions deck. This call is recorded live every Monday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. This is a pre-recorded demo, so if you'd like to join in and ask some questions, please do so. Getting started, first we'll be talking about the Paxos 80 and the Paxos 920, and then we'll go over Paytrace, and I'll be showing you a live demo of the Paytrace website as well. Going into the Pax S80, the Pax S80 is really a simple terminal for a merchant who isn't interested in our point device. This terminal is included in our $25 a month platform bundle. It is advisable to have a merchant upgrade $15 to the point device, but if a merchant does just need a simple terminal that has the ability to run surcharging, the Pax S80 is a great option for them. The Pax S80 comes included with an integrated thermal printer at the top, a magnetic strip reader along the side, an EMV reader on the bottom, and an NFC antenna at the top. This terminal is small, compact, runs off of Ethernet and dial-up, and like I said, has the ability to run surcharging and cash discount for any merchant. So if a merchant does just need that simple terminal, doesn't really need all the fancy additives that, that you get on the point, then this is the terminal for them. This terminal does have a 3G counterpart, that would be the PAX S920. The PAX S920 is a 3G terminal, like I said, it also has the ability to run off of Wi-Fi, has the same similar set of features, has NFC, EMV and a magnetic strip reader, charges with a micro USB cable, and is very fast and compact. So just going off of it, the thermal printer is again at the top of the terminal, magnetic strip reader is on the side. EMV at the bottom, and the charging is right here. Some of the benefits of using a micro USB cable for charging is that most people have these. So if a merchant's on the go, perhaps they're a delivery driver, or they provide services at somebody's house, like a contractor, they're able to charge this in their car or with their existing cell phone charger. This terminal also has the ability to run surcharging. So if a merchant needs a simple terminal just for processing payments, then this is the terminal for them especially if they need cash discount or surcharging. Moving on to Paytrace though, Paytrace is a virtual terminal, so it's essentially an S80, but it's all on the website, paytrace.com. It can be connected, uh, connected to via any internet web browser, so you know, on a desktop computer, on a phone, laptop, tablet, any of those. It allows a merchant to process payments via keyed in transactions. There's also an, an optional magnetic strip reader, the MagTech, that we can send out so a merchant can swipe cards as well. Some good prospects for this virtual terminal setup is a professional services uh, company, perhaps like a doctor or dentist, attorneys, accountants, bookkeepers, graphic designers, data rich businesses charities, and online and subscription businesses for e-commerce. I've seen a lot of people utilize this for dance studios, karate studios, places where you might not have a lot of transactions every day, but you'll have a lot of subscription businesses. So uh, somebody comes in and they agree to pay you $15 every month. Some notable features of Paytrace is that it has billing and invoicing built into it, has the option for recurring billing, and has a ton of shopping cart integrations for their existing website. The recurring billing section on Paytrace is very advanced, allowing you to select a customer at the top, select how much, and the frequency. As you can see here with the frequency, there's a lot of different options so the merchant can have it exactly how they want, as well as some options for the start date, whether or not to process on the weekends, how many transactions to run, and how many attempts if declined, as well as a description so they can keep track of everything. Invoicing and discretionary data is another big feature of Paytrace. As you can see here, there's a number of options for the invoice, the invoice number, the amount, some other drop-down fields, where to send it to you, as well as what message to put there. And you can also attach an invoice, so just to give the customer more information about what the invoice is for. Discretionary data, we talked about that, and I'll be showing you on the live demo on the Paytrace website. 
but there's different options for what to select. So for mer so let's say the merchant wants to keep track of a case ID if they're a, an attorney. What they would do is they would select uh, the name for the option, so case ID. It'd be a text box. It would apply to customers. It is required. And you can also select the length and the data type. So going off that, we'll go ahead and get right into the live demo of Paytrace. At the top right, you'll be able to see that there is the option to, to log in as well if you'd like to see this yourself. We just log right in. Select the sun. And this is what the Paytrace dashboard looks like. For most merchants in their everyday operations, they'll be using one of the buttons here at the very top. So, for instance, if you have Manic Strip Reader, you'll hit Swipe Card, type in the amount, hit process, uh, just hit you know, swipe and then process it. Going back, if you just want to key in a card, you would come here. If you want to, you could select a customer, so say Joe. Joe Schmo. Then we have his card number already pre-filled with the expiration date. All you need is the amount, so in this case $50. Now you can optionally put in the CSC. This is recommended as it helps lower your risk of a chargeback. So, so we just put that right there. And as much as information as you can put here, it helps. And then you just hit process. And then hit OK. And of course, because this is a demo, it won't actually go through, but on a regular merchant, that would be going through it right now. Back to the dashboard. Here's where you go to add a recurring payments. You have the option to new add a new payment, edited payment, or view payments. So we're going to go ahead and new payment. Again, we're going to look up Joe. Old Joe Schmo. And here we can select. So let's say it's a $15 every month we will be processing on the weekends we'll be starting at January 1st transaction count let's say it's a 12 month billing agreement we're going to try three times and we're going to add that and hit add and there we go it's also a printable consent form so the merchant can have them sign that that also lowers the risk of a chargeback just in case anything goes wrong. Here we have the integrations menu. This is where you'd go to email an invoice. You can add different information here if you want to change it. The invoice number will say it's one five eight nine fifty dollar transaction. We'll be sending that to my email address. And we'll hit send. And there we go. Here's the options to add customers. So just like I was able to pre-fill that information, if a merchant has recurring uh, customers that come in for a regular basis, so they're a doctor's office, they're going to probably see the same people a lot. So we can add different customer IDs, different information about them just to keep track of them. We can swipe their card or just add their card number just so we have a card on file. Card on file is really important in Paytrace, so every single customer needs to have a credit card on file. Add different information about them. And then hit add. Down here is that discretionary information that I had mentioned previously. So this is custom to this demo account, so you can put whatever you want here, which I'll show you right here. So adding a new discretionary item, which like I said, we'll do case ID. It will be a text box, applicable to customers or products. It is required. It can only be eight digits long and is alphabetic, so a random string of letters. This is also the option to add reporting. So if a merchant wants to keep track of certain things, they can get reports on different time scales. This is quite long because it's a demo. So frequency, we can do a daily report, let's say at the end of the day, and they just want to select, you know, they want the invoice numbers, billing names, what IP address this was run on, just all transactions. You'll be able to select the user account, that's quite a lot. And what processing method? You hit send. Going over here, there's also the option to add users. So 
By default, Paytrace has one user account. For most situations, that might be fine, but let's say that the m owner doesn't want to give away their account information to their secretary or assistant, perhaps. They could make that person another user account. So we just add that there. Give them a name. We can select what kind of permissions we want. So we just want them to be able to process sales, process sales, perhaps manage some occurring payments. And you can also select how much money you want them to be able to process. So let's go $4,500. And hit save. Did not work. That's fine. So that would be how you would be adding different users. They can also edit some of their options, such as branding, so they can change this up here to be their company logo. They can also view their account information, make sure everything is correct. And if it isn't, they can always contact us and have that fix that for them. Thank you very much for joining. If anyone has any questions, you can always email us at support at spawn.com or join this conference live every Monday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thank you very much.